Support Wrestle Talk. Hello and shut up. There are 20 of these to get through and you know what the king of the ring is. I'm Adam from Wrestle Talk and here are 20 wrestlers who could win king and queen of the ring. Number one, Finn Balor. Now I'm not sure about you, but I think it's time the prince leveled up to become a king. Following hopefully a definitive victory over Edge in a Hell in a Cell WrestleMania match, Balor will be left wondering what's next. Sure, a singles championship would be nice, but before that, let's get Finn donning a crown and a robe, not Sheamus's crown, please. In all seriousness, Balor needs to maintain momentum following WrestleMania, and a big King of the Ring win could help him in the rebuilding process and eventually land him back as a main eventer in WWE once again. Number two, Charlotte Flair. Speaking of WrestleMania, in all likelihood, Charlotte Flair will be walking out of Hollywood without her 14th World Championship. After all, it's Rhea's time and 100% the right call. However, if Charlotte needs a bone thrown to her following her loss, how about we have her become the second ever Queen of the Ring? I mean, she's kind of unofficially had that title for years now. So how about just giving her the crown and being done with it? I mean, she's achieved literally everything else at this point. You might as well add another accolade to her goated career. Number three, Montez Ford. Montez Ford clearly has a fan in Triple H, getting much more of an opportunity to spread his own wings away from the tank scene recently. That Elimination Chamber breakout performance, very good. He really doesn't lack anything when it comes to being a WWE superstar. He looks great, has charisma out the wazoo, and he already has crown experience. 2023 is set to become his breakout year. Number four, Bianca Belair. Moving on to Ford's wife, and similarly to Charlotte, Belair is likely to be walking out of Mania without her title, and not just because Asuka's been playing keep away. Instead of immediately thrusting Belair back into the title picture, WWE could hold off and give Belair a Queen of the Ring win instead. Allow Asuka to get a few Ws under her belt as champ for doing any potential rematch. Also, if choosing Ford for the King of the Ring, we could have a nice awe moment as the husband and wife walk out of Jeddah as a true royal couple. Number five, Bronson Reed. The still undefeated in singles competition, Bronson Reed is looking like a bit of a menace these days and certainly has a bright future in WWE as long as Trip stays in charge. He recently told Fightful that he never wants anyone to kick out of his tsunami finishing maneuver, which is fair enough. I mean, realistically, who would get up from having this man land on you? Let him squish three men in one night and take that King of the Ring crown home. Number six, Dakota Kai. Dakota King? More like... Queen. Since Damage Control form, Kai seems to have had the least amount of spotlight. After all, Io Sky got that amazing moment when she got to call Asuka a bitch. The former Team Kick member deserves her flowers and also a crown and a big scepter to hit people with. Number seven, Chad Gable. The Alpha Academy looks set to be put to rest very soon with Otis joining the Maximum Male Models, while Chad Gable hopefully gets a well-deserved singles push soon. A tournament like this is the perfect chance to make a definitive statement about Chad Gable. His endurance, his innate un underdog chop. It's the perfect time to give a perennially overlooked super talent a moment in the sun. Also, his actual dad, Kurt Angle, was king of the ring, so yeah, do it. Number eight, Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss is a bit of an odd case in WWE. She realistically could have a championship cabinet that mirrors Charlotte's by now. However, it seems like following an extremely strong start to her WWE career, she's been languishing for what feels like forever. Well, not forever, ever since that f doll showed up. Since Lily, Bliss has become a shell of her former self. You could have her win Queen of the Ring and finally begin her ascendancy back to goddesshood. She would make a great heel foil to ask her too. Number nine, LA Knight. Let me talk to you, knights, kings, this promo writes itself. Another favorite of Hunter's, LA Knight's got the it factor and is definitely establishing a connection with the WWE audience. As good as he is, WWE's pretty stacked in the main event right now, so perhaps a King of the Ring win, then a mid-card title should come before an LA Knight main event push, and giving the megastar that crown will be a great way to boost his stock in the company. Number 10, Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan is someone who seems to maintain a solid amount of popularity, whether she wins or loses. I mean, we all worried WWE had botched her completely following a disastrous title run last year, but she's actually been doing fine since. Whether it leads to a push back into the title scene or not, this would be a good consolation prize for Morgan, who has had to settle for second best at the Royal Rumble and the Elimination Chamber so far this year. Number 11, Sami Zayn. So first things first, this one, it won't happen because of the country that King of the Ring is taking place in, but I'm going to plead my case anyway, just try and stop me. Zayn will likely be riding a wave of momentum by the time the tournament comes around post-WrestleMania. However, who knows how long that will last, you know, those guys... KO and him just can't stay friends, so a nice singles win in the King of the Ring would be a nice way to continue his momentum that must not die. Please, WWE, don't let it die. Number 12, Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green was reintroduced in WWE with a whimper at the Royal Rumble. However, her character work ever since has been really fun. She is a very good Karen. And you know what really fosters entitlement? A crown on the head. Good luck, Mr. Pierce. Number 13, Bray Wyatt. As bizarre as it would be to see Bray or Uncle Howdy sport 
sport a nice shiny crown, similarly to so many others on this list, Wyatt quite simply needs something to do. Wyatt's WWE return began in such epic fashion over six months ago, and the only thing of note he's done is promote some Mountain Dew. Hopefully Bray's match with Lashley does go ahead, and it surpasses our low expectations, then Bray can build off the momentum with a surprise inclusion and win in the tournament, and hopefully WWE can make it all make sense because I can't. Number 14, Bailey. With damage control looking likely to collapse if they lose to the Legends team at WrestleMania, Bailey may once again have to step out on her own very soon. The good news is she's great at that. Despite her previous success, she might need a confidence boost to get on the right path once again, and the Queen of the Ring would fulfill that just nicely. Bailey would also make a nice potential challenge to ask her in her Raw Women's title run, although she did lose a lot during last year, so maybe just keep her away from the title scene for now and let her just enjoy winning something. Number 15, Drew McIntyre. It's been quite a while since Drew McIntyre was in the hunt for a world title and it's about time that changed. While the King of the Ring likely won't guarantee a title shot, a win in the tournament would get Drew feeling like a big deal again, particularly after probably losing in the Intercontinental title match at WrestleMania. Because of this, a momentum boost is vital in making sure McIntyre remains a big deal. And you know what? Him getting to the final against Sheamus and winning and maybe becoming heel King McIntyre? Yeah. Number 16, IO Sky. As previously mentioned, the days may be numbered for the damage control group, so how about you have IO Sky win the Queen of the Ring and have that be the catalyst behind Bailey tearing the group apart? Whether she directly beats Bailey in the tournament or is betrayed simply out of jealousy, it could provide a nice rivalry leading into the summer. The divide could also force Dakota to pick a side and add another interesting dynamic to the feud. Either way, the end goal should be Asuka versus IO at SummerSlam. Please and thank you, Mr. Helmsley. Number 17, Johnny Gargano. Gano. Johnny Wrestling, much like many of Triple H's rehires, has impressed in short bursts on the main roster, but hasn't had a whole lot of substance to do. A way to fix this would be orchestrating an underdog-type victory in the King of the Ring, perhaps against some big lads defying the odds and claiming the crown. Heck, even if he didn't win the thing, a strong showing would still go a long way. Just give him some direction, please. Then have Champa return and derail that direction in brutal fashion. Number 18, Candice LeRae. Like her husband, Mrs. Wrestling has not had much of anything to get her teeth stuck into since returning unless you count getting beaten up by damage control or trying to cheer up a lonely Nikki Cross as something meaningful to do. To have her make her mark in pulling off a couple of big wins in the Queen of the Ring tournament, Mr. and Mrs. Wrestling is king and queen of the ring. That's some brand synergy. Number 19, Jay Uso. Jay Uso is one half of the greatest tag teams of all time. Yes, but who can forget his run as main event Jay Uso in his battles against his cousin Roman Reigns in late 2020? We want some more of that. As we've seen, fans can really get behind Jay, especially if he finally decides enough is enough and turns his back on Roman. Perhaps a J King of the Ring win could earn a title shot against Cody, only for Roman to demand he give the shot to Roman instead, finally pushing J over the edge. And number 20, Becky Lynch. Similarly to Charlotte, the man doesn't really have much left to achieve in the WWE sphere, so a Queen of the Ring win could simply be a box tick, sure, or more intentionally, it could provide a suitable distraction from the title scene long enough for Lynch until the time is right. If rumors are to be believed and Becky versus Trish, is a possibility for SummerSlam, how about we plant the seeds in this tournament with Stratus either helping Lynch win or costing her the crown in the final. And that's our list. Who do you want to see win King and Queen of the Ring? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to see more of these quick pitch style lists, check out last week's 10 pitches for Jay White's AEW or WWE debut. Here's a clip of that now. Perhaps the biggest no-brainer when it comes to AEW debuts would be for Jay White to jump straight into a feud with Kenny Omega. After all, the two men have a whole heap of similarities, though were both leaders of Bullet Club. They both won the IWGP US and World Heavyweight Championship. They both hate Kazuchika Okada and they both got lovely hair.